What's going on you guys? It's me, Anarchy Ninja. We just joined a Heroes vs. Villain match because there's no Galactic Assault available. And as you can see, it is your standard Heroes vs. Villain match. But anyway, we're here to talk about Ahsoka, I guess. I'm looking over some of the, the, the comments from the last vid. Because I forgot a lot of stuff when I was talking about it, to be honest. Like, side note, random tangent. Goddamn, Chopper, I'm so glad he's back. I'm not the hugest fan of Rebels. I don't hate it. I don't love it. It's just... All right, there's things I like, there's things I didn't, but Chopper's one I like. I love the little talking shit droid, dude. Oh my goodness. I'm glad we get to see him in live action. But one of the things we didn't really talk about that somebody brought up, kind of, is... Wow, it's going to be hard to do this off the top of my head. And try to not die, but... Why did Ahsoka not want to teach Grogu? That's the reason I pick uh, Yoda right now, side note. But is teaching Sabine, and... I think there's a couple things we have to think about. I don't know the exact time frame of when this particular episode took place compared to the Mandalorian episodes and Book of Boba stuff where she said she didn't want to train Grogu. Because I know the shows are shooting kind of parallel to each other. Right now, the season three of Mando is ahead of where we are in Ahsoka, if I understand correctly. So I... Where I'm going to spitball with you guys. At the time of her saying she didn't want to train Grogu, would she already have Sabine as an apprentice? Or would they have already uh, went through their little fallout here and kind of like had their breakup for a moment? I'm not entirely sure how that, wor how that would work. Huh. I'm, I'm still trying to spitball through here. We didn't really think about it too much before we got on. But that could help explain why she wouldn't want to train uh, Grogu at the time. Because she already had Sabine. Or the, the fallout could have already happened between her and Sabine. And she's like, you know what? Maybe she's kind of like down herself. Like, man, I've already been through the, the, the training process with someone and it didn't really work. Maybe I'm not the best leader. It, it could also tie into that to a certain extent. But also you have to just think maybe she has too many attachment issues. Or Grogu had too many attachment issues. It might just be that. He had too many. My, my gut feeling. Well, again, we're just spitballing. Let me see here. Maybe because uh, Sabine is having so much attachment issues and problems like dealing with the past. Like attached to those memories of losing Ezra and losing her friends and Kanan and shit like that. Maybe that's one of the reasons she's talking so much about attachment issues. Not just going back to the Anakin stuff where that's what we all kind of were led to, to believe. You know, we're like, oh, she's talking about Anakin for the most part. But she could also have been mentioning or saying that because of Sabine and the stuff she had went through. But again, all that hinders on has she already taught her at that point. Maybe they I've missed when exactly in the timeline this takes place. Like maybe they have an uh, actual date for when those episodes took place compared to Mando. I don't know. So let me know. I'm just spitballing here. I don't know shit. I'm dumber than most of you when it comes to this shit. We're just spitballing and having a wonderful time watching our teams get decimated in Heroes vs. Villains because there's no Galactic Assault matches since I got on a little late today. That's my fault though. But yeah, what else? Uh, there was something else I wanted to... What was it? Oh, I'm drawing a blank here. What the fuck was it? Let me scroll through. Let me see. Um, ba -bum, ba -bum, ba -bum, ba -bum, ba -bum. Oh, Sabine having uh, force abilities. Like, it's always kind of hinted at. If I remember right from Rebels, I've only really had one watch through Rebels. I haven't went back in or caught up on it. But, like, she was able to start mastering the Darksaber after struggling sometimes. So, like, I get there's always been... A little bit of that with her. But even here, I'm forgetting his name, the droid, some Chinese name, I don't know. But he was kind of saying how she has like the lowest tier of force powers that he's ever seen. So that's my hope personally is that, yeah, she'll have a little bit, but I don't want to see her really going around and having these like super strong force powers and shit like that. Like Ahsoka should be way better at that. He, she's not Anakin, you know, like, she, she's gonna be a badass warrior. She's a Mandalorian, obviously, that's gonna help. Now she's getting some training from uh, Ahsoka, who's gonna teach her some lightsaber fighting. And give her a little bit of force idea, you know, teach her how to harness the little bit of force she has. So I'm not totally against that. Now, they could go down a route where all of a sudden Sabine is just, like, some god-tier Jedi, which, I, personally, I feel like that would be a, too much of a stretch. But they haven't done that yet, so I'm still on board with that. I'm not I'm not turned off by that. <laughs> Definitely not turned off by Sabine. Yeah, let's hope it stays that way though. But uh let me see. Let me scroll through here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
Yeah, Balin. We were talking about Balin. I really like Balin, and it's not just because I'm a Titus Polo fan. You all know I like me some Titus Polo, but I mean, he gives off the vibe of a villain. I don't know if I covered this in yesterday's video. Of he's not just some straight up evil guy. He's not a good guy either. I'm not saying he's a good guy. Before someone's like, eh, you just know me. no, he's not a good guy, but he's not just straight up evil. Like even when he was talking about having to kill Ahsoka, he didn't say he wasn't gonna do it. It was more like. It's going to be a shame to kill her, man. You know, like he still has a, I don't know how you would want to call it. Not attachment, but like, he still has that part of him in him that was a Jedi. Like he's like, this is going to be a shame. There's so few of them left, but we got to do what we got to do. Because at the end of the day, he's all about the money. He's a mercenary. That's the vibe we get from him. He's a mercenary who has Jedi powers, basically. So I wouldn't call him a great Jedi either. I still think he's way more to the evil side as of now. But I, I have like the way his character is, um, how do I put it? More of from an intelligent standpoint. Like he's not just straight evil, like I just want to kill people. You know, he, he re this is gonna draw some hate maybe from comparing him to Dooku, but he would be more along Dooku's lines of being a villain where he's not just purely evil. He has his reasons and blah, 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 blah. Still not on the level of Dooku, but I think he's more towards that than some of the other villains we've seen of late. So I, I'm personally enjoying that from him. And that I forget her name, his apprentice. I always forget her name. Shy, Shoddy, something like that. Shorty, I don't know. She gives off vibes of like... I'm confused with her, honestly, right now. She's doing an awesome job compared to Reba. We talked about this in the stream yesterday. They're similar type characters. They're not full-fledged Force users yet, like, like Balin or someone who's been a Jedi. They're still kind of feeling their way through, you know. And Reva's character and Kenobi just sucked right out the gate. I couldn't stand the acting. It felt like her, her trying to play the dark side. It felt forced in a lot of the scenes, which I didn't really like. Where I'm not getting this with this character that I cannot remember the lane for the life of me. Shock, no, not Shock T. What was that Shock T? Whatever, the blonde girl. She's given off such a, a better dark side vibe. But there is part of me. Where I'm like, are they, they're, they're putting a lot of focus and emphasis on her. Are they going to go down the route of her being the main villain as of now? Which I kind of think they will since, oh, we're freezing. Since for those who don't know, uh, Ray Stevenson, the guy who plays Balin, passed away recently. He's, the actor's dead. He finished filming this season though, if I understand correctly. So maybe his line or his character has already played his course and they already filmed his death scene or whatever it might be. But let's say... He didn't finish him. He was going to be in season two. Now they're going to have to make it be more of a... I can't... Man, I should Google her name right now. I don't remember the fucking girl's name. The blonde girl. His apprentice is the... Kind of the future of that group of them. Like, whether she's going to take over power or he dies fighting Ahsoka and she's left to kind of take over. I kind of am getting that vibe even without him dying. Since the... Uh, again, he shot his scenes before he passed away, unfortunately. R.I.P. him. 13th! You know, you know. So, I, like, I'm getting that vibe. Like, she might just be this badass villain. But, anybody else feel this? I kind of, like, I'm kind of getting a vibe. Like, she might be a little confused. I could be completely wrong. Again, we're just spitballing. Like, is she going to ultimately come over to the light side? I don't like all my villains doing that. You know, I don't mind them being a little confused. It's kind of real. I don't think anybody's just pure evil to pearl. Pure great. I think more people have this stuff was real would be a little uh, in between with a lot of it like is that the vibe she's going to like i kind of got at times like some of you were saying like the way she's staring at uh morgan when she's talking is almost like a a, a treacherous way like she might be undercover if you will. i'm not getting that vibe but I, I could see where people are getting confused with it but i don't know let me know you let's dive into that thought more i i don't really i'm still thinking she's going to be the main villain after this Unfortunately, besides Thrawn, obviously, like main uh, force villain, I guess you could say. But uh, yeah, what else did we talk about? The main talk of um, this Inquisitor being uh, whether it's Ezra. These are my two options. I think it's either Ezra or it's either Barriss Offrey or Ophi. I don't know how to pronounce her name. Ezra, because if you're trying to shoot like that sub uh, subvert expectations, you know, mindset. 
it would be cool to have that like, man, where's Ezra? We all miss him. Oh my God, where's Ezra? And the whole time he's been here, he's been this dude. That would be awesome from that standpoint. And he has been kind of going back and forth between light and good guys. For those who haven't seen Rebels, he's training with Kanan, who's a Jedi, but he's also training with uh, Maul, basically, and he's easily tempted, let's put it that way. So him going to the dark side would not surprise me at all, or at least for the time being going to the dark side wouldn't surprise me. But that's one reason I would say he could be Ezra. But on the other hand, I feel like they're going to try to tie in as many characters as they can with this, and Ezra's already the, one of the main focus. He got lost at the end of Rebels, and they're going to go try to find him. That's one of the main things. So I don't feel they need to do that to tie in his character to the show. He's already going to be there. But what they might need to do, since it's already so Rebels-focused, this is literally Re Re Rebel Season 5, or what, what, how many uh, seasons did Rebels have? This is just like a continuation of that. So they don't need to do any tricks to get Ezra in there. But what they might need to do is, since it's so Rebels-focused, is let's tie this in with Ahsoka's main storyline as well. Where she basically got kicked out of the Jedi Order because of Paris Offrey. So you could see that story arc play out here. Where she might actually be that Inquisitor. Just an idea. I'm, kind, I, I'm, I'm really torn, man. It depends on when you ask me. I'm kind of leaning between it being Ezra and Paris. I could be... It, again, it depends on when you ask me. But I could see it being both cases. Like really, I'm kind of leaning towards Barriss right now. If I had to choose gun to my head, do you think it's Barris or Ezra? I would say Barris. And then you also have the people who are like, this could just be a completely new character, which is true. It could be. But they already have two. They got Balin and they got this girl that for the life of me, I cannot remember her fucking name. Let me, let me Google it here. Balin. I'm typing with one hand. Here. Oh, Kenobi, could you chill out? Apprentice. Let's see. What's her name? No. Shin Hati. I hope I said it right. That's his apprentice. Now, where was I going with this thought? Damn it. Oh, th th both of those are already new characters. So they already have the new blood. They don't necessarily need to bring in a third one. They could. But I'm still leaning it more towards whatever that character is. The Inquisitor. It's probably someone we've already known. So, like Ezra or Barris. They could be someone else. But just because he's hiding behind the mask... I, I kind of am leaning towards this is going to be a character we've already seen. Maybe it's not Barris or, uh, um, drawing a brain fart, or Ezra. But I'm willing to bet money that character is going to be a character we've already seen. I'm still leaning towards Barris. Sec a close second would be Ezra, but again, let me know your thoughts on it. Who knows? But it would tie into Ahsoka's story, which I think they might want to do. Because you know Dave Filoni, he is a fanboy of Star Wars after all. So I could definitely see it going down that route and playing out that arc. Because part of it is... Did they all leave? Where are they all? It's kind of on a side tangent, but like I really feel like you're going to have Anakin come in and try to finish the training with his Force Ghost. With her. I feel like they're going to try to seal up that gap. And I feel like closing out that storyline arc or plot line, whatever you want to call it, with Barris would also help with that. Where, like, she kind of hinted when she was talking with Hera, where it's like, oh, man, he never got to finish my training. And now she's kind of having that whole thing with Sabine, and I'm kind of getting the vibe he's going to come back in. Maybe officially make her a Jedi, since she's never officially a Jedi. We all know she has the power, and better than most that are probably still out there at the time. But she doesn't have the technical name of it, you know, or the actual title. I kind of feel like Anakin might come back and give us one of those uh, Brianna Tarth moments for those who watched uh, the last season of Game of Thrones. Where we all know she's a badass. She can hang with most of these fighters. But she doesn't actually have the, the knightly honor. She's not a knight. And he just makes her a knight. I kind of feel like we might get one of those scenes with Anakin. Where he comes back and like, alright dude, you know what? You're doing all this shit. You're carrying on where we all have failed. Let's just make you one. Come on, man. Let's go. Enough of this shit. Let's get you one. I kind of feel like we might get a scene like that. And that might help tie in with uh, Barris coming back. Because they might want to finish off that plot line. I'm like, man, you know, she kind of helped cause this problem. Ahsoka's going to have some feelings, you know, towards that. Maybe she'll even blame her. 
blame her to a certain extent why she's not there at the end when Anakin, the way she'll see it is most needed. I think Anakin was going full, full retard either way you look at it, you know, but I'm kind of, if I had to guess, I'm leaning that that's the direction they're going to go with that particular plot line. But anyway, let me know what you guys' thoughts are. Uh, what else? Hmm, let me see. I think we already covered most of them. The rest we've already talked about on the previous video, really, so I don't think there's really anything left to go off. Anyways, good time of the video is basically over this. It's their turn to just get absolutely raped, apparently, in Heroes vs. Villains fashion. Surprise, surprise. They're just going down. Let's just die here with honor. Come on, you guys. Let's go out fighting with honor here. Come on, Kenobi. I know I'm still forgetting something. Anyway, it's over. We'll remember it later. Anyway, well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, let me know what you guys' thoughts are on those topics or, or any that I forgot about. I'm always down to go into it. But uh, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys tomorrow if everything goes according to plan.